It's a truth of healing. And, and really, I want through the, these truths to really convince you. Because every single one of us, we battle that. Every, every one of you know your pastor had a leg injury. And, and uh, there's, there's a nerve that runs from the knee to the big toe. And, and that nerve, I call it alive. And, you know, no matter what the doctor has said in the reports that they have given, I'm believing the Lord. And so that says that I am healed. That's what God's word says. So I'm not this, this that's just not a wing. That's not this, okay, just so I can be religious. And No, it's, just, it's, it's fully believing the Lord. Jeremiah prophesied, say Jeremiah 17, 14, you know, I'm saved and I'll say I'm saved. And I'm healed, and I'll say that I'm healed. And when you take healing and salvation, you know, it takes faith for those things to come to pass. Now, healing is a little bit different because faith is none other than Jesus. The only way that a man can be born again and saved is at the name of Jesus. His finished work. Now, when it comes to healing, healing is a great mystery because, yes, God is the healer. Healing is provided through the cross. Jesus redeemed us. But there are many ways that it's just not one simple formula. It could be with your faith. It could be with your obedience. You know, it could be just God's mercy. You know, but our, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, our job is to continue to believe. Okay, I'm not just going by what's evident. Now, I'm going by what God has said. You know, his word is true. Amen. And when it comes to convincing you of this truth, it's got to come by the word of God. Amen. Faith comes by yeah. and hearing that of the word of God. So, you know, he, here comes real life. One, the thing that we all have in common, every single one of us, as long as we're in these bodies... These bodies are subject to things. You know, we're not exempt from things. I wouldn't advise you to think like that because Proverbs 23, 7 tells us that as you think, therefore you become. So if you start thinking sick, that sickness will manifest. You've got to look to the cross and think healed. That's who I am. I'm not going by what I'm feeling in the lungs right now. Or how I might sound. Okay, I'm the healed of the Lord. Amen. My lungs are clear. Hallelujah. Amen. My lungs are healed in the name of Jesus. I'll speak that. There's power, power in your words. And there's power in your believing. So I'm either going to believe right or I'm going to believe wrong. And whatever it is that I'm believing, I'm going to give power to that. So if I start thinking sickness, or I start thinking death, or I start, then I'm giving power to that. No, i got to look to Jesus. He's the author and minister of our faith. Every good thing, James 1, 17, cometh down from the Father of lights above. I mean, you know that healing is a good thing. Yeah. Healing comes from him. Sickness and disease, they come from the devil. That's why Acts 10 and 38 tells us he oppresses. But Jesus come to do what? To set us free from that. He was anointed of the Holy Ghost, went around healing all. Jesus healed all. Amen. Get that truth in you. Okay? When Jesus dealt with somebody, he didn't say, you know, you weren't good enough. or No, he, he loved people, and, he, and that love was demonstrated in his healing. So sometimes we just need to get the truth of, of God's love Amen. for us. How much God truly loves us as a father. Amen. But what we normally do is we line it up with our experience. You know, this is what happened, you know, or, you know, how come Pastor Dirk, I've seen pulling his leg around up there. You know, he should be healed. So Pastor Dirk, he must not have enough faith uh, to believe God. You know, we don't understand it all the time but I'm going to continue to know that one thing that God wants from me is faith Amen. Hebrews 11 6 says that without faith I can't please God you 
Now, it's not about the, the good works that I do. It's about believing him. And healing begins with believing him. That's where it comes from. God is the healer. Amen? Amen. Hey, you know, just think, okay, think about your salvation. Okay? And we know the enemy lies even with that. Okay? We know that we're born again simply because we believe a truth. Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. He died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. Amen. That is the power of the gospel. That is the message that never changes. That is the message that brings about salvation. It brings about a born again experience. How do I know I'm born again? Well, I'm changed. I'm not, because I believe that and I surrendered to that, it changed the life that I used to live. That's why 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, it, it, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new preacher. And the old things are passed away and all things become yeah. new. Hallelujah. So, you know, that, that took faith for me to believe the gospel story. It's, everybody has a measure of faith. God give you a measure. He give you enough faith to believe that report. Isaiah 53, 1, Isaiah would say, who's going to believe this report? Amen. Well, to whom the arm of the Lord has been revealed. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is, to get from the outside to the inside. He has to show you your condition and who you are, that you're sinful before God. That God is, God is faithful, God is holy, and it's through the blood of his Son that your sins will be washed away. When you receive Jesus and repent of your sin, the, the Holy Spirit allows that blood to wash you so that he can move into you. You become clean through his word. You become purified. Now the Holy Spirit lives in you. To do what? To continue to reveal truth to you so you can come to know that truth and allow that truth to allow you to walk in freedom. Hallelujah. Now it comes to, you know, the issue with healing. Because the problem is, you know, we're, we're very spoiled people. And it got to happen like right now. And that ain't often how it works. Unless it's a miracle healing happening right then, that's something that we fight in the faith. Okay, we battle in the faith. You know, Paul would say, I fight the good fight of faith. And what's that doing? I'm fighting for truth. I'm standing for what is true. I'm not going by what I see. I'm not going by what I feel. I'm standing completely upon the word of God and what he says. And, and, and Jesus, you know, Jesus never changed. Hebrews 13 a. He's the same. He never refused anybody. When he walked the shores of Galilee... He opened blind eyes, deaf ears, you know, Jesus even raised the dead. But he healed the sick. That's what he did. That was his, his purpose, that was his mission, was to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. So we could be set free. And how did Jesus do it? He did it out of his love for you. Jesus loves you. I thank the Father for his love. His love that through his son that he heals our bodies and we, we thank him that he's healing us today because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. So what he did, he's still doing and he's going to continue to do. Healing should be a big part of what you believe in your salvation. It's the shalom of God. It's the wholeness of God. It's God's peace. It's God's blessing and prosperity. And it's God's healing. I believe in healings. Hallelujah. And we've seen so many. We've seen so many. But, but I will tell you that lately it's been more of a challenge. And of course, you know, the enemy's pointing here and he's pointing there, you know. We just got to come back to faith in God. Okay? We're asking God to pour out. We're asking God to, to heal people today. And I'm believing in vision that 
that people are going to have testimonies of what God has done healing their bodies. Amen. Glory to God. Okay? It, it's his word, but, you know, it's also your faith. You know, God wants you to believe. You know, it's just, you know, why certain things happen. You know, that's been sometimes major blows in the ministry when it doesn't go the way that we think it should go. And what's the answer for that? Well, there is no answer. The answer is for me to come back. We, we all are required to have faith before God. You know, Psalm 103, 1 through 3. This is the word of truth. Okay, so, so I believe for salvation, and let me ask you, is God your creator? Yes. You believe that? Yes. You, you believe that God created you in the womb, yes. or knew you before you were even born? Yes. That's a pretty big God. And if God, God is your creator, and if he created you from the dust of the earth, how difficult would it be for a God to just touch your body? It's not difficult at all. Nothing is too difficult for God. Okay, so so don't don't just you know we're prone to a lot of times just take it naturally. You know this really proves our faith because you know it's just an illustration of of just a simple headache. Okay, you get a simple headache and we live so natural we just. We just run to the medicine cabinet, take a couple pills, and good to go, okay? Or pain in your back, you know? God wants you to believe him first. Amen. Seek him first. And if you truly believe in healing, that ought to be the first place that you go. And it doesn't matter how big or small that sickness may be, because we put those in categories, too. Okay, it's a fever, yeah, I'll pray for that. Headache, yeah, I'll pray for that. Oh, wait a minute, you got a broken bone? Oh, okay. What's the difference? It's nothing to God. It's nothing to God. Cancer, that's nothing to God. Okay, so, you know, that, that's the truth because Psalm 103, what does this truth say? The well, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Forget not his benefits. What are his benefits? Well, he forgives my iniquities. He heals diseases. Look at the connection of those two. Because sometimes, and I don't want you to, to really focus upon you. Because, you know, when it comes to, I call it the ministry of condemnation, Paul would talk about. We could stand up here every week and preach on sin. And make you drop your head and feel terrible and convicted and you know but when you become sin conscious you're probably gonna go and sin okay I want you to be grace conscious I want you to look to the cross the goodness of Jesus because he loves you and what did he do in his life he poured out his blood for you so you'd be forgiven and forgiveness a lot of times that will manifest the healing. There is a connection sometimes to the sickness in our life and sin itself. So, you know, that's why it's good when you talk to the Lord in prayer. I believe that it's good for you to make a confession. You know, Lord, I confess my sins before you, and I'm thankful that you're faithful and just, and you've cleansed me of all unrighteousness. Okay? That's done. And if there was some connection with that, you know, but don't focus upon the sin itself. Because I could take a whip and, and beat you with the word of God. You know, you take something as simple as lying, stealing. You know, you take the, the law. It's easy to preach the law because none of us, none of us can keep that. We're going to fall short. I want to look to the grace of God. That's the better covenant. That's what Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. And what did he do? He's forgiven all your sins. And he heals how much of your diseases? So that's a good scripture to get in your spirit. God, you heal all my diseases. Okay, so I'm healed. You said in 1 Peter 2, 
24 on the heel of the Lord. He said in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, he said, as the heel of the Lord. So I'm just saying what you say. My confession lines up with what your truth is. I am healed in my body. Glory to God. All of us have an individual responsibility in our faith. And what you tolerate, you know, you, whatever you're putting up with, you know, it's going to just stay there until you deal with it. And how do you fight your battle? Well, you fight your battle with the Word of God. Amen. So open up your mouth and say that. I'm saved and I'm healed. Let's look at a couple stories. Okay? I see 25 after. So let, let's just look at a few, a few scriptures. Matthew 9, 1 through 5. I rebuke that. Glory to God. Jesus entered the ship, and he passed over and came unto his own city. And behold, they brought in a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Your oh, there's that connection again. Your sins are forgiven. And behold, a certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say your sins are forgiven, or rise up and walk. So, when you see this man, here is a demonstration of somebody, and it doesn't show us that this man who was sick, he had any faith. It doesn't say that. Who had the faith in this story? His friends brought him to Jesus expecting, that's part of faith, it's an expectation. You know, it's like putting a demand on God. God, I believe you, this is what you said. And his, the, the friend, it doesn't say that he had any faith, he doesn't make any confession. And what's Jesus deal with first? He deals with sin. Amen. Maybe there was a connection there with the palsy and sin in his life, but Jesus forgave his sin. Okay, that's a whole other topic. We'll talk about that later. But when Jesus did that, you know, immediately, you know, they said only God can forgive sin, and that's what they're going to crucify Jesus over with, anyways. But look at six through eight. But they may know that the Son of Man has power on the earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the sick of the palsy, he said, Arise up your bed and go to thy house. So what did Jesus give him? He gave the man a command. Sometimes that's what the Holy Spirit is saying to you pertaining to your healing. He's telling you to do something different. Do what you <coughs> couldn't do before. He said you're having trouble raising your arm. Holy Spirit might be saying start praising the Lord. Okay? You know, start, start you know, lifting your leg or whatever it is. Be obedient to that. And what happened? Healing took place. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and they did what? They glorified God because they knew that's where the healing came from. Why does God heal today? Because God wants glory. Every healing that manifests, may God be glorified. Amen. Not that man take any glory. You know? It's, it, this is all for the work of God and through his Son. Verse 35 to 36, Jesus went to all the cities and villages, teaching their, in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing, well, what's that word? Every sickness and every disease among the people. Is it God's will to heal? Absolutely. There's not a, a, a true parent that would want to see their own children sick or hurting, you know, as a parent, we want to see, do the best we can for our kids. How much more does God love us? Amen. And Jesus proved that in the ministry. He healed every disease, every sickness. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. How did he do it? Why did he do it? Because of his love for the people. Matthew 8, 2 through 4, Behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. And he asked the question, If you're willing, if you're willing, all of us battle that. We battle that. Let this truth be established in you that God wants to heal you. Amen. 
It is God's will for you to be healed. It's not God's will for you to be sick. That's not God's will. So then when I'm feeling that come upon me, and I realize, you know, this isn't God's will for my life, that causes me to react in a way of faith, begin to declare, to begin to believe. You know, that's how that's going to change. That's how you're going to work your way out of that place of, of miry clay or that pit that the enemy has pulled you into. And that's what faith does. Faith has an action. Faith has a voice. And faith will speak what God has said. And what has God said? He said that he, his will is to heal. And he said to the leper, yes, and what did he do? He put his hand on him, and he touched him, and he said, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed, and Jesus said unto him, See, tell no man, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Matthew 8, 5 through 7. You with me? Say amen. amen. And Jesus was entered into Capernaum. And there came unto him a centurion. Now we know this story is about the centurion's faith. And beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will, there it is again, I will come and heal him. And then we know the centurion, there were, there were two Gentiles that Jesus said, I've never seen such great a faith in all of Israel. And there was a Seraphonician woman in this centurion. And what did the centurion? He just said to Jesus, Oh, I don't need you to come to my house. I'm not even worthy to have you in my house, Jesus. All you've got to do is speak the word, and my servant will be healed. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was like, Step back from that. It's like, Wow. You know, this guy got faith like no other. You know? <laughs> and and that's, that's where it is with, with faith. Sometimes. You know, it's just a faith that, you know, we want hands laid upon us. You know, their faith that we're, we need to do something. And then there's this faith that just says, it's already done. I'm the healed of the Lord. You know, I had years ago, I've told this testimony before. I was in the shower and, and I was washing. I felt this lump on, the, on my back. And uh, every day I'd pray there and I'd rebuke it and say, I'm the healed of the Lord, you know. And every day, it, it was still there. And uh, I heard the Holy Spirit. And this is what the Holy Spirit speaks to me most, is in the shower. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, why don't you have the Bible study group come and lay hands on you and anoint you and pray over you? And I didn't like that. And I think, no, <laughs> I'm healed. You know, I don't need them. You know, I only need you, Lord. And the Holy Spirit said, you have the Bible study group come and pray over you. And I had to humble myself. And I had to tell the Bible study group, I got a, a lump on my back. I don't know what it is. And, and uh, God wants you to take oil and come and pray over it. Well, that's scripture. James 5 says, call on the elders of the church. Let them take oil. It says, the prayer of faith will save the sick. You know, it also says, if they've committed any sins, they'll be forgiven to them. That's how powerful healing is. It's just like complete work of God. So, you know, you know, when it comes to that, you, you can just go in your natural mind and say, well, I'll just, you know, it's, this will sooner or later, this will just pass. Or you can just say, you know what, I'm just going to believe God. You know, why not? Why not? Hey, well, I called the Bible study group and they prayed over me. And it was confirmed by some of the people, you know, that I was healed and sure enough. Next day in the shower, I was back there. It's like, wow, this is amazing. It was completely gone. I battled that thing for weeks, you know, and I stood in faith believing, but the Holy Spirit wanted something more from me. And what did he want? He wanted my humility. That was, that was a difficult thing for me to tell the people that I had something and for the group to come and to pray over me. You know, he wanted the humility, he got it, and he got obedience, and I got healed from it. Again, it could be as simple as you getting out of your seat and coming and standing here this morning. It could be that simple. Matthew 15, 30 through 31. Got a few more scriptures hanging there. 
A great multitude came unto him, having with them those who were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, many others, cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. And it's much so that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb speak, the maimed be whole, the lame will walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Purpose in the healing? So that God can be glorified. God just wants to be revealed. He wants to be known. And how is he known? Through the power of his healing. Story where the disciples ask about this man being born blind. Whose sin was that? Was it his parents? Was it his? Jesus said none. So that the works of God should be made manifest in him. God wants glory, and he gets it through healing. Hallelujah. James 5 and 15, prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith. will save the sick, the Lord will raise him up, and he may committed sins, they shall be forgiven of him. Mark 11, 24, therefore I say unto you, whatever things you desire, what is it that you want? When you pray, believe that you receive them. And you will have them. So who's that on? That's on you. Amen. Jesus did it. And he's calling you to believe it. And in believing there's a vision. The vision is what? I'm healed. And I desire to be healed. And I receive that healing. I see myself healed. I don't see myself limping around. I see myself running. Glory to God, because I believe and I receive from the Lord. Matthew 9 and 22, this is part of healing, is your faith. Matthew 9 and 22, Jesus turned about. Here's the woman with the issue of blood. Twelve years, she spent all she had, went to every doctor she could, and her condition grew worse. And when she heard of Jesus, she come and she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. She began to speak faith. She knew she wasn't allowed around the crowd. So she worked her way through. And she's like, I'm not even going to touch the guy. All I need to do is just touch the hem of his garment. And when she did, Jesus heard, felt virtue come out of him. Power of God come out of him. And she was healed. And when Jesus was like, who touched me? The disciples were like, there's a thousand people around here. What do you mean who touched you? Who touched me in faith. Amen. And here this woman was. And what did he say to her? He said, woman, don't be afraid. Be of good comfort. Your faith, your faith, your faith. Whose faith was it? It was hers. We have a responsibility of this truth of believing that Jesus is our healer. And if I believe that, I'm going to respond to that. I'm going to act to that. And the woman was made whole that hour. Let me show you a couple more. Matthew 9, 28, 29. When he come into the house, blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, I believe you that I'm able to do this. Do you believe this? They said, yeah, we believe. And he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it done unto you. What's he saying? He's saying, what are you believing for? What do you want to happen in your body? What do you need right now from the Lord? He said, let it be unto you according to your faith. This is a faith to believe. This is a faith to believe, to come to God. I like Hebrews 11, 6 because it says, not only does God, uh, the only way we can please him is by having faith, but he said, he that believes to God will come to God. And God is a rewarder of those who dil diligently seek him. So that's the action of your faith, coming to God and allowing God to heal you. You need healing? I need healing. Okay? We just believe in God this morning. That's all. Luke 17 and 19. He said unto him, Arise, go your way. What happened here? You believed. And because you believed, you received it. Mark 10, 46 and 48. They came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people blind Bartimaeus. Now this is a whole different story in itself, but here's a man, he's been blind his whole life, he hears about this healer, and let me tell you, he gets pretty desperate. 
He heard Jesus is walking by, and he starts yelling for Jesus. Jesus, son of David. And, and it, what's everyone else doing? Shh. If you got desperate in church today, that's probably what your neighbor beside you would do. Oh, no, someone's going to start going out today in service, you know, to a desperation. Man, I want to see. I can't see. I need to see. There's somebody who can, can make that happen. That's what Jesus does. And he cried all the more. Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And Jesus summoned him, called him. He come to him and said, what do you want? He said, I want to see. Bam, he got it. He was desperate. When was the last time you got desperate for healing to take place in your body? Cry out to Jesus, believe him. That's what faith does. Faith in action. Verse 49 and 52, commanded to call him and he was healed. Praise the Lord. Acts 10, 38, the devil was the oppressor. Jesus is the healer. First John 3, 8, Jesus come to destroy the works of the devil. Glory to God. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, there's the double work of the blood that was shed at the cross. It was prophesied. So number one, you can be forgiven of your sins. Without the forgiveness of your sins, you will never ever enter in to the glory of heaven. You will never go to heaven until your sins are forgiven. Amen. That's what Jesus come to take care of. That his blood was the purchasing price. This is the grace that's available to you. And not only can you be forgiven, or you will be forgiven, but that blood was also for you to be healed. For me to say what? By stripes I'm healed. Mm -hmm. That's what God says, and that's what I am. I'm not going by... What, what is evident in the body, I'm going by God's word. And let me tell you, I'm going to continue to fight the good fight of faith, believing, and that healing will manifest Amen. into my life. Amen. And it will manifest into your life. Yes. So this morning, we're going to sing a, a final...